Hello everyone. This video is a tour of Grid Controller. We'll start by importing the asset from the Unity Asset Store. Grid Controller imports into Plugins, Pixel Crushers, Grid Controller. The first thing we'll do is take a look at the manual, which is inside the Grid Controller folder. At the bottom of the manual is a link to the scripting reference. Grid Controller has a fully documented API. Now we'll take a look at the demo, which is in the demo folder. This door opens automatically. This door opens when you interact with it. Grid controller also has free look mode. This door opens when you interact with a lever. Grid controller also has crouch mode. And it works with stairs and ramps. These stairs take control of the player and moves the player to a new scene. Now let's take a look at the grid controller prefab. The main component is called grid controller. You can set the update mode to real-time, as in this demo, or turn-based, in which movement happens when you manually process a turn. You can also set the square size of the grid, specify whether the controller moves smoothly between squares or snaps from square to square, whether you can queue up multiple input commands, enable camera head bob, enable crouching, and much more. Next, we have the free look component. If it's present on your grid controller, the player can free look using the mouse or joystick. The grid controller input component handles input using Unity's built-in input manager. Grid controller also has built-in options to use rewired or the input system package or any other input system because it's abstracted in a C-sharp interface. Details on switching to rewired or the input system are in the manual. Here I'm clicking check input settings to ensure that the input manager's input definitions include all of the inputs that grid controller uses. Grid controller audio handles audio such as footsteps and door sounds using Unity's built-in audio system. There's also an option to switch to built-in FMOD support or support any other audio system since, once again, audio happens through a C-sharp interface. The last component we'll look at here is the Interactor, which lets Grid Controller interact with interactables such as doors, levers, and anything else that you want to throw an interactable component onto. Lastly in the scene, we'll take a look at the stairs. It has an auto mover component, which takes control of grid controller and moves it into a scene portal. The scene portal then changes scenes. If you want to change the way scene portal scene transitions happen, you can create an empty game object and add a scene changer component. This will turn the game object into a singleton, where you can configure if and how it fades, whether it uses synchronous or asynchronous scene loading, and more. Finally, we'll take a look at the arrow pad prefab, which is entirely optional to add to your scene. It adds UI buttons to control grid controller. You can, of course, change the appearance and layout of all of the buttons in the arrow pad prefab. One final thing we'll look at is the surface component, which you can put on floors and walls. The surface component lets you specify audio to play when the player walks on a surface or bounces against a wall. Here we'll demonstrate both. And that's the bounce sound. In the next video, we'll put together a scene from scratch.